Howdy guys, welcome back to BIG Photography. This is Ben, and today's video is about uh, using the waveform monitor in Affinity Photo. Uh, my last two videos, I talked about using the vector scope to get better skin tones and the waveform monitor to uh, get a better white balance. And I kind of made those videos with the assumption that uh, a lot of my viewers knew how to read a waveform monitor. Now, because waveform monitors are not usually in photo editing apps, they might be unfamiliar to certain photographers, whereas you usually see them in video editing apps like Final Cut Pro, uh, Adobe Premiere, DaVinci Resolve. But a lot of photographers have never really used a waveform monitor or vector scope and might be unfamiliar with them. So I thought it'd be really interesting to actually just go through the basics of how to read a waveform monitor and how it can help you with your photography to assess things like exposure and color cast that might be present in your image. So in today's video, I'm just gonna be talking about the three uh, main waveform monitors that are present in Affinity Photo. Uh, I have a whole video on using the vector scope to get really good skin tone, so you can watch that. But today's video is gonna mainly be about the intensity waveform, or sorry, the RGB waveform, and the RGB parade. So with all that being said, let's just go ahead and just jump right in. Okay, so first, if you do not have the scopes present in your toolbar, you need to go to Window, and then come down to Scope, and make sure Scope is checked. And we are looking at the first one, which is the intensity waveform. So with the intensity waveform up, uh, I have the gain set to about 400. This just makes the image uh, the brighter so it's easier to see. Right now, I am staring at a 50% gray image, and that's represented by this line that goes right across the 50% line. If I were to take this gray and you know raise the exposure in a sense by raising up the luminosity a little bit, you'll see that line move. If I were to put the luminosity right at 60, you'll see the line goes right to 60. If I were to raise this all the way up to 100, you'll see the line goes up to the very top. So in this sense, this is our max exposure, 100%. If I were to bring it all the way down pretty low, you're gonna see it's right down here near the zero where complete black would be zero and the line would be at the bottom. Now there is a bug with Affinity Photo's waveform monitor where 0% actually shows up at the top. Uh, it shouldn't do that. So if I move it up to one, you'll see the line is here. So that's how the intensity waveform actually works. Now, what's also great about this, as opposed to using a histogram to judge exposure, is that the intensity waveform shows you a graphical representation of your image from left to right. I'm gonna demonstrate that by putting up this gradient here. So here we have a gradient where it gets bright from the left to the right. Now, at the very left side of the image, the image is fully exposed at 100% brightness, and we can see that by that line here on the vector, uh, the waveform monitor. I keep saying vector scope. And as the gradation gets darker and darker, our, you know, in a sense, exposure goes down and down and down until we're at the very edge where it is black and it goes down to here. If I were to take my gradient tool, and if I were to start to move the white more toward the center, you'll see that represented by the vec uh, waveform monitor. Um, you'll see that the white is totally white up to about the midway point, and then the exposure slowly starts to go down. If I were to drag the black a bit toward the center, uh, again, this bug is present where it's showing the line at the top, but just to make it easy to see, I'm going to switch that not to 100% black, we'll just go up one. That way it looks more like how it should look. So you can see here is our dark parts of the image. Here's our white parts of the image. So the intensity waveform shows you a graphical representation of your image from left to right, not top to bottom, just left to right. Let me show that one more time in a different example. Now, if I were to get a paintbrush, and let me just paint with something kind of dark here, and I just paint a plot right here, you're gonna see that here on the waveform monitor, it's showing that the exposure drops right at that point. Now, it doesn't matter if I paint down low or I paint up high because we're only getting a left to right representation of the image, not top to bottom. So it doesn't matter where you paint on the image, it's showing me that at this point here on the image that uh, the exposure value drops. If I were to get something light and maybe paint around here, you should see a peak Perfect, just like that. Now the reason why we're seeing this kind of mountain shape is just because I'm using a very soft brush. If I were to take the hardness up to 100% and let's just paint something like this, then you're gonna see just basically a line because there's no real gradation between dark to light. So let me just go ahead and do something like here and let's do a really bright 
maybe a smaller peak somewhere around here, almost to like white. Okay. Now, if I were to, for example, take a screenshot of this waveform monitor, and then I'm going to go ahead and place it over top. I'm going to go ahead and place it right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and stretch it out so it takes up the whole image. And if I lower the opacity on this, you're going to see how all the points line up. You can see those two bright areas are right in the middle. This dark circle is here. This dark circle is represented here. Here, the light one, this medium kind of light circle is represented there. So this is a great way to assess the location of the bright and dark areas in your image, much easier than trying to read a um, histogram. So let me go ahead and turn those off and show you what a real picture might look like. So if we have a picture like this, now we're gonna actually see what a real waveform would look like, where we have you know peaks and valleys, brights and darks, and it's really sometimes hard to read, but once you're used to it, it's pretty easy. So for example, we can see this really bold, like line that kind of goes from dark and gets pretty bright and that's going to be basically the dark parts of this building here and then the kind of really bright parts of this leaf that's kind of out of focus and in front you see these two peaks that are right here at the top that's going to be these really bright parts of the image that are in our win of the windows and you can see here or not the windows but between the buildings and you can see here that we kind of have this like sawtooth pattern where it kind of goes bright and then gets dark and then gets bright and then gets dark and that's going to be basically this kind of fence posts where it's bright and then it's dark and then it's bright if i were to overlap the waveform on top of this and raise up the opacity you can kind of see where everything is kind of falling in place. You can see that sawtooth pattern on the left basically being right where that fence is. You can see those really bright parts uh, as the sky coming up between the buildings. You can see there's another little bright spot here and a little, little bright spot here, and that's probably gonna be that bright spot in here. And then we can see where her skin tone is, and that's gonna be this kind of Thing right here at the 80% mark. And that brings me to my main point and the main use of using the vector scope, at least for me, is judging exposure on your skin tone. So let's look at this image right here. For my portrait work, I like to have my skin tone for the face basically fall around this 80% line. Now this is going to be different for image to image, but if I'm doing a typical standard portrait, you know, usually the face is going to be one of the brightest parts of the image because you want your attention to go to the face. And so I like to have the face usually around the 80% mark. And as you can see here, because now we know how to read the uh, waveform monitor, that this right here is represented by this bright part on the waveform, and that is their skin tone. We can see that this brighter part is gonna be the bright part of her shirt, and this bold line that's coming right across below the 40% mark is this gray background. So by using this information, I can tell if my image is kind of exposed properly or not exposed like take a look at this one. So here I might look at this image and it might look good to me, but for me, I look at the waveform and I can see that her skin is gonna be this kind of cloud right here. The green dark part of the dress is represented by this lower part in the waveform monitor and this white line is obviously the white background. Now looking at her face, I can see it's quite high. It's coming up in almost a 90% range. That might be a little bit too high for me. So I might actually come into a curves adjustment or an exposure adjustment and maybe try to lower that, maybe even lower the highlights a bit more and maybe just get something that I think might be a bit of a better exposure. So maybe something like that might be a little bit better. There, actually, the skin tone does peak a little bit above 80. It's probably mainly this bright highlight on her nose, and that's fine. That's not going to bother me, but I think that's a little bit of a better uh, exposure than we had it before when it was too bright. Now, this is not a hard, fast rule. So what I mean is in this image, we know his skin tone is going to be this peak right here, but it's way under the 80% mark. But that's fine because that's the look I was going for. I wanted something a bit dark and moody. The waveform monitor is really great to have your image at a great starting point. And then from there, you can kind of make your creative decisions. Now, the next main monitor you're going to use would be the RGB waveform. Now, what this is going to 
going to do is going to show you the color information was the red channel, the blue channel, the green channel kind of overlapped on top. So you can kind of get an idea of what colors are present where in the image. If we go back to this image here and we switch over to our RGB waveform, we can see that even though we have a gray background and they're wearing a white shirt, looking at the RGB waveform, we can see that this is not actually white and this gray background is not actually gray. And we can see that because we can see the blue channel is elevated in this gray background area and on her white shirt, which looks white to us, we can see it's not actually white. So that's the great thing about using uh, scopes is that it gives you an unbiased assessment or an unbiased view of your picture. After a while, when you're editing, you know, you kind of lose track of colors and our eyes in general will always try to compensate to make things look kind of correct. That's why when you're outdoors and you're inside, you know, we always just see light as kind of looking like white light unless it's really, really colored it's where cameras don't. That's why cameras will often be more orange or be more blue where our eyes kind of automatically compensate for that. And so when you're looking at images, and when you're doing photo editing, sometimes, you know, oh, this looks fine to me. This looks gray. That looks white. But we can actually see it's not actually gray. It's not actually the white. So what do we do if we want to correct this? Well, I think the easiest thing to do is just to use a curves adjustment layer. So if I go down here to my adjustment layers, grab a curve. And because I can see the blue channel is quite elevated, I'm going to start there. And I'm just going to take my blue channel and I'm going to just drag it down a bit until it kind of gets more in line with that green, just like that. And then here in the middle, I'm gonna drag somewhere down in the middle of this blue channel and kind of get that, that was a bit too much, a little bit like that. And there we have more of a neutral starting point. So that was before, and you can see it, it does have a slight blue tint to it, and this is the after where this gray is now more neutral. Now, again, this is not quote unquote correct because when I edited this image, it started off looking gray like this because I did a proper white balance. But, you know, I wanted to add a little bit of color, a little bit of subtle color in the background. So I did purposely add this kind of tint to kind of make it look, you know, cool, I guess, or just to add some flair to it. So using the waveform monitor is a great way to assess a great starting point. So an example like this, say you're doing an image for like a magazine or a website and you might say to yourself like, okay, um, I want the background to be white. So when it shows up on the website, you don't see the edges of the background. And if you're just editing, you might think, okay, that looks white to me, but we can see on the wave on the uh, RGB waveform that it is not white. It's actually got a little bit of a bluish tint to it. And then even her clothes, which is black, it's not actually black. We can see that there is kind of a teal tint to it. Now, if we wanted to correct this, we would do just like before. I'm going to start with the blue channel and drag it down a bit to get it even with that green line. And then I guess I'll do the same thing down here in the darks, bring that blue down. And then I'm going to take with a red channel and I'm going to raise up the reds and the highlights. And then I'm also going to raise up the reds in the shadows to kind of neutralize that tint and there. So in this case, this would be what you consider a neutral image. We know that that white is totally white and the blacks are totally black. And we could see that because it was present in our uh, RGB waveform. Now, this is not always the case. If you have an image like this, like obviously this is totally way too much red, but that's fine. The background is supposed to be red. But I can also see if I switch to my intensity waveform that the exposure is good. Like her skin tone is falling right around that 80% line where I like it. And another really good use is a way to get rid of color cast in clothing or things that should be white. So for example, in this image here, we have a yellow background with her wearing a white suit. And a lot of times it's really hard to judge like, well, I can't even really see where the suit is. I'm assuming it's this really bright area here. So one thing that's really helpful is to crop in on that area. So the waveform is only showing you that. So if I were to crop in to a small part of her jacket, which we think should be white because it's a white jacket, but because we're shooting on a yellow background, a lot of that yellow is being reflected into her suit. And I can look and I can see, yeah, of course, like this is not actually white. If this was white, then there would be an equal amount of red, blue, and green in the image. And we can of course correct that by bringing up a curves. And we're just going to lower the red channel a little bit here and then 
raise the blue channel something like that that's a good starting point and then if i want to return to my unclipped image i'm going to go to document unclip canvas and it's going to be very subtle you might not even be able to see it on youtube but i can see that with that adjustment i kind of neutralized that yellow cast that was in her suit uh, i actually made a video about this a while back uh, where i talk about how to remove a color cast and if you've watched that video a lot of this information won't be new to you because i do talk about using the scopes to do that and then the last scope we're going to look at let's go over here is going to be the rgb parade and this is really easy because basically all it is is with the rgb waveform the red channel the blue channel and the green channel are all overlapped on top of itself where if if we do the RGB parade, they are separated next to each other, so it's a little bit easier to read. So for example, in this image here, if we undo our correction and we switch to the RGB parade, it's a lot easier to assess that, okay, we can definitely see that there is too much blue in the white and not enough red. And sometimes it's easier to make adjustments because now what we're trying to do is line up everything. So if I wanna line up that blue, I'm gonna drink that blue down or drag that blue down. And then we are going to raise up the red a little bit like so. And then here I can see, you know, the red needs to be raised a bit in the shadows to kind of get rid of that teal in the jacket and then maybe the blue is a bit too high so depending on what you want to do or depending on your image sometimes it's easier to look at the rgb parade sometimes it's easier to look at the rgb waveform it's really just going to depend on your image but just by doing that we can kind of clear out this blue tint and that way we know if we were to post this on the internet on a website on a magazine with a white background that you're not going to see a slight color difference in the edge of the image so that's all <laughs> uh, i know this is a, probably a lot of information really quickly and you know it might not be useful to some but i think especially like i said you know, you don't usually see photographers using a waveform monitor or a vector scope, but I find it much more useful than a histogram because it actually shows me the image basically from left to right and I can easily pinpoint highlights and dark airs and I can easily pinpoint when I have a color cast and it also helps me to adjust my exposure. And if you've watched my last video on white balance, it can help you kind of assess your white balance. And if you watched my video two back, you can see how we use the vector scope to really nail in and assess your skin tones. And if you've watched that video, you can look at this image, you know that the skin tones are pretty correct. Now, even without my adjustment, the skin tones were fine, um, but you can see the skin tone is falling right along that eye line. So that way we know our skin tones are looking good. But anyways, guys, that's all I wanted to do today is I wanted to make sure that you actually understood how to read the waveform monitor in Affinity Photo and how it can actually help you assess your work. Uh, okay, guys, so that's all for this video. Uh, the next video is going to be quite interesting. We're going to do a little bit of a departure from our normal stuff. Uh, you'll see what I mean when it comes out. But I hope you guys enjoy it. And until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.